Hello everybody, Big Planes here, and in the last video I gave you a little bit of a hit at what this video would be all about, and it's finally come. Something that I've been wanting to do for a very long time has finally arrived, and I finally bought the equipment to be able to do so, and that is powering jet engines. So if you guys didn't know, I had already powered the B-24, which is all the way over there on the floor. If you can't see it, it's right there, I'd already been able to successfully power the engines on propeller-driven aircraft, but have never even attempted to power jet engines, and I finally figured out a way to do that. And I'm going to implement this on every single jet going forward that uses high-bypass engines, the 747, and yes, of course, the 737 will have these engines too. So that's going to be really exciting. So what we have here is a system that I have devised that can actually power the engines. So there is a power functions M. I can't guess. This is an engine on a 747, by the way. If you were wondering, it come, came from this thing. But this is the engine for the 747. And I've actually put an M motor in here with the smallest power function motor that there is. I put it right in here. It then runs the cable out the engine. And I would, on the 747, run an extension cable here instead of hooking it directly up to the receiver. And then that runs to a power box. And then that is how I motorized engines on the 747. And what this allows you to do is use your standard power function speed dial control to be able to actually power the jet engine a little bit or all the way up to speed. What's so cool about this is that you can actually hook up multiple engines to this thing at the same time. So one day soon, the 747 will have four spinning engines on it making a ton of noise and it's gonna look awesome. But how does this affect you if you're wondering? This right here is the 737 project. Some work has been done. I finally cleaned this area here up a little bit. I'm still waiting for parts to finish this thing since we're really close to finishing it, believe it or not. But this one, I have already designed it to have functioning turbofan engines. So the base is a little bit interesting down there. The engines are gonna be somewhat interesting. I have decided to go with a 500 because I want to have those larger engines. Thank you for all the input you've given me, but I'm gonna power the engines on this thing just like I've designed them to on here. And actually, today I made a visit to the local Lego store down in our area, and you never guess what I found there. If we dump out this bag here, there we go. What we found there, this is super exciting, I actually found five, or these are the M motors, as you can see, it might be a little difficult to see through there at this point, but these are the M motors, the smallest power function motor. So we have one, two, three, four, five, five of those. So we have one in here already, and then I bought three more for the 747 because there are four engines on the 747. So add these three right here to the 747 that already has one right here, and that'll give you four engines. But these two M motors, are for the 737, so one would go in each engine, and that's gonna be super exciting because what those will, how those will work, there will be one in each engine, I will figure out a way to build them in there, then they will hook up to a, over here, a speed transformer, one in each um, tr uh, channel, right? And then that speed transformer will hook up to the standard battery box right here, somewhere in the center of the aircraft, and that will give you the ability to control it using this remote, you can actually control the thrust and speed of each engine, like it would be flying, but it's, it's not flying. But what this will allow you to do is actually have some pretty realistic looking jets. And something that I found with these M motors is that they actually sound a lot like a uh, real jet. So you can see that this does sound like it, especially when the motor gets older. I'm gonna try to hold us closer to the microphone here. Especially when the motor gets older, it starts to make a squeaking sound, and that sounds actually a fair bit like a jet engine would. So I'm really excited about this new design that I've come up with to be able to actually power these jet engines. It is super exciting for me. The first aircraft that will be outfitted with it is the 747. It's still kind of beat up from bricks by the bay, but I will be not flipping this thing over and setting it back up until all the engines are wired. So they hook in right here, and they will be wired to a battery box down in here. So this will be the first aircraft to be wired up. Then as we start making more progress on the 737 right here, I will wire up its engines. This one does use smaller turbofan engines, but I have determined that they are large enough to house a 
M motor, which is the smallest Technic motor, to be able to actually power them. So this is going to be really exciting. I hope all the aircraft I build with high bypass turbofan engines, and high bypass engines are engines that have these large fans in the front, like the B-52 over here. So navigate my way around here. See how it has small engines in the front? This wouldn't be possible because it's not as much of a high bypass ratio. In turbojets, we can't motorize those either because they don't really have the huge fan in the front. But anything with high bypass turbofan engines, from this point on, I do plan on motorizing. So that's all I've got for this video. I'm super excited to be able to see what I can do in the future. And I just focus on something else there. And yeah, that's all I really have for this one. Please be sure to hit like, hit subscribe. If you have made it this far into the video, thank you. And that's all I really have for now. Bye.